week in indoor football, we got a lot of things to go over. Why don't we start in the CIF first? The CIF has finished their season. Congratulations, you made it to the end. I believe the CIF is actually... No, wait, no, not the CIF. There's another league that finished up first. Um, you know, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that team who runs that league in a moment. But CIF um, first. Salina Liberty, Omaha Beef, Champions Bowl 7. What a game it was in which Omaha blew a 15-point lead. Like, they were up 28-13 at one point. You know, Omaha had the beef, or rather, the beef had the lead for pretty much the entire game until the final five minutes. And then Salina was able to finally get their defense, you know, under control, get them, get them out there, and get them rabid. They were out there beasting and feasting the final few minutes of this game. And Salina, with that defense, with an improved offense in the second half, were able to finally get over the hump. Finally get over the hump because remember, they lost a couple of CIF championship games. They lost a couple of champions bowls. They've had some terrible seasons. But Haran O'Neill and company finally got over the hump. And now Salina has concluded the season with the championship for the first time. So, in the rematch, there will be no there will be no repeat. So, Salina, congratulations to everyone on that Liberty organization. You guys earned it in a hard-fought game. What what things need to be addressed this offseason for the CIF? It's very simple. Mesquite, that, that's really the only thing that needs to be addressed there, and the Texas expansion, if that's even going to happen. The things that have gone off this season, you know, for the CIF have not been very good. Keep in mind, Billings is also looking for a new head coach once again, uh, so there's that, you know, as well. Um, this off season is key because remember I said last I said last year the CIF won last season's off season and yet they completely face planted during the regular season this year in 2022 with so much going wrong for them but I'm glad that the season ended on a high note with a entertaining game between Salina and Omaha and you know. There could be a defection, you know, as the rumors have been continuing to circulate about the beef, you know, leaving right after they leave a championship. We'll see what the beef actually have to say on that as we get further into the rest of the regular season and the off season. So we'll see what they have to say. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more on the beef right now. Um, in the IFL, the playoff tiebreaker scenarios, they were released. Um, Bismarck, San Diego, both of you have been eliminated. And Green Bay, I believe they pretty much were eliminated last night after they got whipped up by the Frisco Fighters. Um, you know, it is what it is there, but the tiebreaker scenarios are as follows for the IFL playoffs. Win-loss record, conference win percentage, head-to-head -head record, Strength the schedule, head to head point differential, and point differential based on season as six. So you notice that head to head is below conference win percentage. Um, and again, the schedules are very, very imbalanced in the IFL. Like you've got teams like Frisco only playing like maybe like eight or nine games in the conference. You got other teams like Vegas playing like 15 of their 16 games in conference. So, you know, very imbalanced schedules. Uh, I don't I don't know how this is going to really work, you know, because, again, you got the Rattlers claiming stuff, you know, like, you know, again, we know the Rattlers are going to host a home playoff game. We don't know, you know, if they're going to have home field or not, you know, like, like that type of stuff right there, you know, you know, based off, you know, you know, wins and losses, but whatever. It will sort itself out because we have a month left to go in the IFL season. In the NAL, the NAL is a little bit more intriguing right now as far as, you know, pure insanity goes, you know. It, it's been an insane 
season for the NAL in which, you know, not a lot of people are really behind Iron Man and stuff like that. I know that. You know, I know that San Antonio didn't get off to the best start, but now San Antonio has won three straight games. And congrats to them for winning three straight with the new ownership and everything like that. There is real parity in this league for the first time in a couple of years. You know, real parity in this league, which is saying something. I think this is really the first season that's really been like that. You know, like real parity where every team, you know, has the opportunity. Because remember, 2018, you had Lehigh Valley, the Steelhawks, who went 0-15. 2019, you had the New York Streets. 2020, you had the Jersey Flight, who were a disaster every step of the way. All three, all three of those instances were absolute disasters in their own way. You know, Lehigh Valley because they were losing every single game. I believe they got, even got shut out. You know, New York, the Streets, and at the Flight were just disasters financially and attendance-wise and stuff like that. But I'm glad. And even San Antonio is even bringing a crowd with them. They're bringing a bigger crowd with them, which is good. That is good stuff right there. You know what I mean? So, kudos to the NAL. Kudos to the NAL for getting it together. We don't know where the rule book is though. Um, been asking around for the rule book, and I don't. I can't find one. I think announcers haven't been able to find one either. Announcers, you know, for these games, uh, you know, they've asked for these rule books and they ain't got them. So something's got to get the NAL. Y'all need to release y'all's rule book. Please. Please do that. Okay. Okay. Okay, kiddos. Okay. All right. All right. Next up on the agenda is the lower level leagues. And first things first, the EIF, the Elite Indoor Football League, you know, that league with the Southern Steam and, you know, running the show. And they're playing the Atlanta Furious in the playoff game. I have no idea how that's going to work because I haven't found a score. I haven't found anything like that. I'll look it all up probably after this video goes up and stuff like that because I haven't been able to find anything. This game was played during the Albany-Columbus game. It was played like an hour before, so at least an hour or two before. So certainly something should have been put up as far as like a score or something you know or anything like that because I know the EIF has been streaming some of their games throughout the season so I don't know where there, there should there should be something but there the winner might play Peach State because Peach State is number one in the EIF standing so I'm not sure again I'm not sure how the playoff game is gonna work out and we'll find it out we'll, we'll talk about the EIF playoff and everything like that next week you know, see what in the world happened and everything like that. Because again, right now I can't find anything. But this game has probably been over for about three hours, and I haven't been able to find anything. The APFL, we got to get the elephant out of the room. After I tore in the Charlotte for like ten straight minutes last week, um, this team has issues that need to be addressed. You cannot claim that you were a victim. You can't. You cannot claim that you were a victim when you set up. You know, you you tried to set up the West Virginia Rough Riders in 2019. You know, you tried to meander your way in 2020. We we discussed this already, but I just want to reiterate. Remember, AL didn't even want to have a championship game in 2020. North Texas and Charlotte was like, "Yo, let's get together. Let's do something." You know, because. You know, West Michigan, they, they, they're not doing anything. We, we got this, you know. You know, so the, the fact of the matter is, is that, you know, Charlotte, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta get, you gotta get your integrity under control. That's number one. The integrity of the Charlotte Thunder needs to be under control. The second thing is finances. You know, we're, this team was rumored to go to the NAL in 2021. I almost said 2020 again. But 2021, you know, they, they were rumored to be going. And, you know, like late 2021 and everything like that. And that did not materialize. And thus, that's why the APFL was made. You know, 
that and you know other le other teams from the AAL split off and formed their own leagues. Charlotte being one of them. The fact of the matter is, is that the APFL was a complete disaster from day one. Should have never been a thing, you know. The again, we're, all th all three of these leagues, the AFA, the APFL, and the AIFA, all three of y'all are a disaster, and you know, splintered off from, you know, at least at least it's it was one clown show in the AAL. You split off into three. You know, and I get you know West Texas is doing their own thing, you know, and you know with with the AFA and stuff like that. And we'll talk about them right now, actually, because they're the only again they were the only team to have clinched the playoff spot at this point. I don't know if that championship for the AFA is even going to be on a aircraft or whatever. I highly doubt that at this point. But we know that Magnolia and Wichita will be playing in the playoff game July 9th. Magnolia didn't play this week. Texas Jets, they didn't play this week. Texas Jets are still trying to recruit players, by the way. But they haven't played a game in over a month. I've been saying that for quite some time. And I can't stop saying it because it, it just continues to be true. Um, Rio Grande Valley, they might be dead, you know, as far as I can tell. So Wichita and Magnolia, two, uh, two of the three teams pretty much remaining in the AFA, will be getting together in the playoff game to go to West Texas for the AFA championship. And I presume that'll either be July 16th or July 23rd for the AFA championship. Keep in mind, Wichita did lose to the Arlington Longhorns, by the way. Again, you know, like another loss for a, you know, a team that used to be, you know, so much better than this. They've fallen from grace so hard. It's disappointing. The, meanwhile, the actual top, you know, the, the better of these lower level leagues, the NLFC, had their playoff game last night. Wenatchee and Idaho fighting for the right to take on Tri-City. In the AWFC Championship on July the 9th, and Wenatchee, they got the W. You know, all three seasons of the AWFC, the three seed has beaten the two seed, you know, and, uh, you know, again, Wenatchee, they got it done. And they've been going to take on Dry City on July 9th in the AWFC Championship. Congratulations. Congratulations to you. I hope there will be a live stream for that game. Um, you know there are there is some talent in the AWFC. There is some talent, I think, there. You know, so hopefully everything works out fine. And then last but not least, the X League. Mike Ditka's the X League. Yeah, you know, the lingerie football league, the Legends Football League. You know, the you know the league formerly known as those two entities, or rather the same entity, but their name changed so many times. Yeah, the X League is charging, you know, like 80 bucks or whatever for streaming one game a week on their site. Which isn't very, you know, intriguing because, again, you know, the X League doesn't play a lot of games. You know, they have to have like eight teams and they play like two games. So that's like, you know, that's only like 20 games for like, you know, 80 bucks. That's like 20 games for like 80 bucks and, you know, you know, f f paying twenty bucks a month. Let's say let you know it's an eighty buck deal. So you know the season's like four months in the a in the X League. Twenty bucks a month for that? Y you know why nobody is paying for it? Put it back on YouTube, please. You know I'm tired of this nonsense. We we had this nonsense for CIF Network earlier this year. Put the games back on YouTube where they belong, or at least, you know, get another lower level network, because I know there was a lower level network that was, you know, you know, streaming, you know, and, and broadcasting games for the X League last year, or out of the year that they last played, which is like 2019, I think, so I don't, I don't understand what's going on here, so, you, you know, it's a silly, it's seriously silly that the X League is even trying to, you know, ask people to pony up eighty bucks to get their dicks wet. You know, I mean, that that's real. That's really what this is. You know, you know, there's a lot of simp's. 
you know, watching the X League. A lot, a lot of simps. I saw them in the game chats for most of these games. A lot of these dudes are simps that are horny because they're, they're horny because of the way, you know, the players, these women players, are dressed, you know, for the game. They're horny. They're horny as hell. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some legitimate talent in the X League, you know, but that combined with, with the play itself, you know, like the actual gameplay between the teams is just kind of, eh, that's why I'm not really too interested. The same thing with these other lower level leagues, you know, just the quality of play is not there, and the broadcasting usually isn't there either. You know, that that's the reason why I don't don't really particularly pay attention to like like actually you know watching the AFA or the APFL or anything like that because you know actually watch the games are it's hard it's hard to actually watch these games you know for these lower level leagues X League is a, has a different animal it's not the fact that they it's not the fact that you can't watch the games you can watch the games it's the fact that the gameplay is so mid and people the people in the the fandom for this league is absolutely terrible it's even it's even worse than you know the blind fanboys for like you know so some some of these more established teams you know but it is what it is so that's it that's this week in indoor football i hope you all stuck around with me till the end um again congratulations to this lineup congratulations to all the teams that have been playing throughout the season, there's just a just just a few more weeks left to go. July, the hunt for the playoffs in the IFL and the NAL are heating up, and for some leagues, champions will be crowned in the coming weeks. Until then, till you know next Saturday night when we get back together again. I'll see you all, and you have a great week, I guess. Yeah, I'll see you Friday to give you all an update for what July is going to look like. And spoiler alert, it ain't going to be much. So, till then, see you soon.